Hi guys, this is Michael Cosmos here. I'm just going to do a quick review of my recent debut on Homes Under the Hammer. Uh, just looking back on it, there were a few points which I thought I could share with you and clarify a bit more so that you have a much more informed process of investing in property. So the first one is Dion, as we can see in the program. Uh, he mentions the guide price. In South Yorkshire, I see a house with an amazing guide price. And this is the lowest guide price I've ever come across. And it'll never sell for this. Absolutely no chance. £10,000. It's just a starting price. There are three types of prices you will encounter if you're buying property from auction. The first one being uh, the reserve price. The reserve price is the price that's agreed between the seller and the auctioneer where they are authorized to sell the property. Second of all, it is the guide price. The guide price is the price you tend to see when the property is advertised. This price is also an indication of where the reserve price is set. So by law within the UK, uh, the auctioneers have to set a guide price in a specific way. So for an example, if the guide price is a range from 10,000 to 20,000, it means that the reserve price is set in the middle or somewhere within that range. Uh, and then second of all, if the guide price is a single digit, it means that the reserve price has to be within 10% of that price. And then finally, you have the sold price. If you look at different auctions out there, you will see a sold price of all the lots that have been sold. So the key thing when you're looking at prices at auction, such as this particular property, the guide price was set at 10,000 pounds. That was really uh, what I call clickbait, to just get the punters and the buyers to be interested in that property. The sellers and the auctioneers definitely knew that it would sell for more than that, so they would put a guide price of £10,000. Yes, the reserve price was actually within 10% of that, but nevertheless, they had enough confidence to set a very low uh, guide price with the hope that a lot of buyers would be interested and they will sell way beyond the guide price that they have set. So that's one thing you have to look out for, understanding the different prices that you find at auction. Okay, the second item that Dion points out within the program is that the property is a non-standard construction. Now there's a dedicated man that knows exactly what he wants to do to this house. He also wasn't caught out by it being a non-standard construction house. A non-standard construction property is any property that falls out of the standard definition of standard materials used to build a house. So for example, the definition of a standard house is that it has to be built from brick or stone with a slate or tiled roof. So it more or less means anything that falls out of that definition is non-standard construction. So I would say, first of all, that should not scare you at, at an offset, just mainly because there are so many modern uh, methods of constructions that are being used now that a lot of properties will fall out of that definition. The second part before you buy such a property is to make sure you, may, you do a thorough inspection to see is it solid. If you're not sure, hire a professional who might be able to assist you and tell you if that property is in good condition. Then, second of all, if you are looking to finance such a property, let's say get a mortgage, you need to make sure that you have a good broker who you can speak to beforehand and they can tell you what products are out there and are available on the market. Because like I said in the program, I do have a broker who I work with and I do find mortgages for these type of properties. This is a non-standard construction house. Yes. Was that not an issue for you at all? Did it not put you off? Or? Uh, I do have uh, one or two of these type of buildings within my portfolio. So it's not so much of an issue. Uh, I have a lender who I work with who's more than happy to take it on uh, and, and finance it on a mortgage uh, once we have done it up. So that wasn't so much of a concern. And at the same time, it's a good solid house. 
So I do not necessarily walk away from a deal just because it's non-standard. But what I do is I look at is this a solid house uh, because the reason why certain lenders will not necessarily lend against non-standard construction houses is first of all, some of them is just a tick box exercise. They just do not want anything that is out of the norm. And second of all, there are some issues that come along with non-standard constructed house, such as uh, the concrete house, such as the one which I bought, because sometimes the concrete can begin to um, can begin to crumble over time. So you need to make sure that you don't have any cracks which are already within that concrete structure, which gives you an indication of the condition of that property. But otherwise, look out. Is this a solid house? And then second of all, make sure that you speak to your broker to see what products are out there on the market before you walk away from what could be a good deal. The final point I would like to pick up from the review is at the end, you can see the valuation. The end valuation you can achieve is 105,000, which could mean that there is a profit here of about 38, 37,000 pounds before taxes. True to Michael's word, we're back four weeks later. Wow, I mean, we could hardly see the house before due to the overgrowth. The inside is looking great too. The new heating system along with extra insulation has got the house up to the D rating required before it can be rented out. Well, let's find out what the resale value could be with his purchase price of 59 grand and the cost of the work coming in at 12,800 pounds. Michael's total spend is 71,800 pounds on the house. If the vendor was to look at selling this property, he'd be looking to achieve between 100 and 110,000 pounds just due to the current demand in the area. Yeah, happy with that valuation. It's in line with our expectation for this type of property in this, uh, in this area. Well, minus the usual taxes and fees, those figures present a potential profit of £38,200. But Michael's sticking to his plan of letting this property out and adding it to his portfolio. If the vendor was to look at putting the property on for a rental, it'd be looking to achieve between £500 and £550 per calendar month for this property. We were expecting the 550 figure, um, and we already have a number of tenants who we have applied at that, at that particular rate, so we are confident we'll be able to achieve the, the top end of that uh, rental figure. The average person tends to think that you are either having to have a binary choice between selling the house so that you can realize that profit, or keeping it and then you just simply receive the small rental. But actually, there is a third option. The third option is actually refinancing the property. Assuming that you bought it and you put it on a bridge or you bought it for cash, you can then straight away after you have refurbed it, take it to another lender, to another finance provider who can provide you a mortgage for the new valuation. Which means that if you are getting a mortgage of let's say 75% loan to value, you can actually then get some funds back, which means that you actually Re receive the profit you would have got from selling. And then you, in addition to that, you actually hold the asset and you receive a continual rental income. Personally, I prefer this because selling means that you actually have to put it on the market. And then after that, after you sell it, you incur an additional tax, which is called capital gains. Capital gains tax is simply a tax which is applied for the gains you have made from when you bought that property and the profit margin. But when you refinance a property, you can actually get those funds out and use them for whatever you want and you do not have to incur the tax bill. And in addition to that, you keep your property as well as get some of your profit. So hopefully that has helped you to just get a few more tips on how you can make your investment journey much more informed. I'll see you next time.